<clears throat> excuse me, I'm Craig Wilms, assistant curator here at the Kamloops Art Gallery, curator of the Cube Space. It's my pleasure to introduce Johnny Bandura and his exhibition, The 215, uh, La Squeakway, The Missing. Um, Johnny, you've spoken to this quite a bit this week. Uh, we've, we've had a lot of media come through. Yeah. And uh, staff tour yesterday. And I'm happy to share a lot of this, a lot of this stuff. Um, through uh, some of the interviews I've listened to and your uh, speaking with staff yesterday, kind of this theme of homecoming has come up, uh, partly with bringing the work here, uh, having the exhibition, and also in terms of the, in, in terms of the gallery. I um, wonder if you could speak to that uh, to, for starters. Um, well, I think it's important to uh, bring these paintings here to Kamloops where the discovery was first made because it's such an impactful place for what has happened here. And I think, um, I think people need to, to keep acknowledging that and uh, to keep that awareness alive. Um, so I'd like to start like right with the beginning, like the impulse to start this work and kind of the process of or reasoning behind uh, taking on a project like this? Well, uh, originally I had no direction for this project. I just wanted to paint some pictures to honor these children that we had discovered. And with that, I started with a, a few paintings. And from there, I decided I would continue and do a painting for each one of the children that was found to, to honor them and to really put a, a face to the, to the number that was found, so. Uh, can you speak to some of the kind of inspiration for, for some of these imagined uh, futures? Well, I got most of the ideas just from people that I know in my personal life. I mean, anything from doctors and nurses to, uh, to powwow dancers that I've seen in in, uh, in different uh, ceremonies and things like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, even I was, when I started, I was painting in my garage and I had the door open because it was, it was pretty hot and uh, there was uh, a lot of first responders always up and down my street. So I decided to do some paintings of uh, firefighters and, uh, and uh, police officers and things like that just to kind of honor those people as well, so. And then uh, your selection of palette, a color palette for the, the entire series. Right, well, are you guys all familiar with the medicine wheel? Yeah. You know what the medicine wheel represents and where it comes from? Uh, that's the color palette that I chose to use for these paintings, was from that, so that the paintings themselves could be healing, right? To use that medicine wheel in all those paintings. And, as you can tell as well that I added green in there because the green represents new life and our mother, Mother Earth. So that's where I, I, I got my colors from. Uh, yeah, can you uh, speak a little more to that? Uh, when we first unpacked the work, like I hadn't seen all the work yet, this right. uh, red dot had come up and maybe speak to a little more on, on some of the other colors involved. Yeah, well, I mean, what people call the red dot is, uh, is more of a healing circle. And if you take the medicine wheel and you flood the whole thing with just the color red, that represents the indigenous community as a whole. And I think right now that, you know, that was the community that was impacted the most from the discovery. And that's what we need to focus on right now is healing for that community. So that I made sure that the red dot or the, the, the red circle was in each one of the portraits so you can see it. And sometimes I, I would hide it in different places and move it around and, and things like that, so. Yeah, it's great. We, uh, were kind of, we thought we were spotting a couple paintings like, oh, it's, it's not in this one. And then we'd find it in, on the, in the hair or kind of obscured in something. Right. Um, so this really started out <clears throat> as a kind of therapeutic process. Uh, can you speak to kind of at what point or how this then kind of blew up to become this public exhibition or, or the desire to put it out there? Well, I was posting online as I was going and letting everybody kind of 
see what I was doing as I was painting the portraits. And just after a while of painting them, more and more people started following and it kind of, I don't know, people use the term viral and some of the articles that CBC picked up about it, um, they went viral and things like that and I started getting contacted by, you know, different media outlets and stuff like that. And from there it's just taken off and I've gone to different festivals and museums and art galleries with it. And uh, yeah, now I'm just happy to bring it here to Kamloops where I think, think they should be. Um, can you, uh, <clears throat> I know it's been at the Powwow Arbor here, uh, TRU I believe, the Anvil Center, uh, yeah. in part for exhibition and then also uh, uh, Truth and Re Reconciliation Day. Can you, have you noticed uh, how, how it's been responded to or, or differently in these situations versus having it here at a, in an exhibition? Um, yeah, well, that's kind of hard to say. I mean, it, uh, when I do it like at, um, for like a day event and stuff and I just do it as a kind of a pop-up street art kind of thing, um, it gets a lot of attention. A lot of more people are kind of drawn to it because they're drawn to whatever particular event they're going to already anyways. And so I'll bring it to, like when I brought it to uh, Truth and Reconciliation Day at TRU, um, there was a lot of kids there that happened to see it and they were really drawn to it and yeah, they wanted to take a lot of photographs and, and things like that and I got to meet a lot of uh, really nice people there, so. Yeah, this is great. In um, closing, I just, what do you hope uh, viewers take away from viewing this exhibition? Well, I just, the same message as when I started to keep the awareness of what these children could have gone on to do with their lives and all the other ones across Canada that never had the opportunity to, uh, to live out their dreams. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Johnny. Thank you. Thank you for having me.